Oh, what big eyes you have. Oh, what delicious surprise they have. I wonder. We're here with Andrea Marcovici. Yes, welcome. One of the queens of New York Cabaret. <laughs> you you want to rephrase that, dear? <laughs> One of the. Are you a drag no, today? no, I am. <laughs> What's going on here? You better not touch that. Quite true what no, I was I'm saying. very, very sorry. Yes. I would say one, one of, of the girl queens. Is yes, that what you're the, saying? One of New York's royalty in Thank you. Well, That's a better word. Much better. <laughs> Who is this wonderful pianist you have with you? This one, let me see. Do I know you? You don't know me at all. Yes, I know you, Shelley Markham. And how long have you guys been working together? Long time. A very, very yeah. long time. We knew each other all the way back in the 70s, mm -hmm. and we started working we together. Yeah. Well, I was I was 11, and he was 12. Um, we, we began in the mid-80s, and then we took a brief respite from each other because he was working for people way more famous than I, and then came back together right after my baby was born. And we've been together for the last 10 years uh, straight. Mm -hmm. And not only in the capacity of uh, accompanist and um, singer, but also he is my record producer. Mm -hmm. And I sing some of his songs as well. And we do um, enormous uh, uh, theatrical productions, too, because he is my... Um, arranger and musical director and vocal arranger when we do the 92nd Street Y. Do you, mm. you guys know mm -hmm. about the 92nd Street Y? Mm -hmm. I've been named artistic director for one production a year at the 92nd Street oh, Y, nice. too. Yes, I now am. I am. It's fun. Yes, it's yeah. great fun. It's a great <laughs> responsibility, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I put on my kind of director hat for that one. Aha. Uh -huh. What kind of acts do you fun. bring in? Is, Ax? It you, is it you? Did you ask me a question? I asked you a question. <laughs> I'm so pleased. <laughs> what kind of acts do I bring in? Well, we have juggling, and then there's the circus thing, and then there's that great yeah, big elephant. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're a circus act. Well, the last one I had Jeff Harner. Mm -hmm. And Anna Bergman, Maud Maggart, who is a protege, a protege of mine. Did you say protege? And I said protege. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking hip hop actually, <laughs> of my next production, which will be so hip hop. <laughs> I had um, Chuck Cooper, who was a Tony Award winner, mm -hmm. and I had Mark Coffin. Mm -hmm. And Barbara Brussel, who is one mm. of my favorites as well, and we put on a great big show. It what was, was wonderful. That about, um... It was about Kurt Vile. Oh, very nice. And I have a benefactor who's come along to record it, and we're in the studio now mixing. Oh. Thank goodness, yeah, yeah. because it's a big project, as you must know. Yes, absolutely. To record a seven character piece is very, very expensive. Yes. Expensive. Yes. Yes. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, I love it. Well, you're so closely associated with the Algonquin. Yes, I am. Um, I was actually at your very first show. <sighs> I actually have the, I actually have a, a cassette recording of that. A cassette? <laughs> yes. What's a cassette? I don't know anymore. I dug it out this morning and popped it in just to just to reminisce with it. Um, yeah. But it was lovely. What did you pop it into? Yes. A cassette recorder. Wow. <laughs> far out. You should put that on eBay. It's not an eight track. No. <laughs> no. No. Not, no, not no. far back. <laughs> Hey, eight track. I, uh, Thank you very much. Tell me <laughs> eight track. I didn't. I didn't do an eight track. Thank you. I did, however, do it originally on vinyl. It was on vinyl, and there are still some vinyls. Cool. I'm on eBay That's all cool. the time. You're on eBay. I am. How I'm an services? eBay girl. <laughs> you have to overlook it. I don't do windows if that's what you're interested in. Good answer, Andrea. Good. This Although I could do the him. window of this studio. It's looking a little dusty over there. The studio audience is just <laughs> horrified. They're always horrified. Oh, yeah. Comic um, filler. But no, you're... <laughs> Oh, that's oh. Awesome. Well, I'm here to be educated about cabaret because yes. I am. Yes. Okay. I'm. I'm. I have. I. You're I the can foremost, on, as I understand. I am the in, queen. You are the queen. As not in drag today, but the queen. I am of the cabaret. queen of cabaret, according to my press, which I adore. So why, 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 as the common man, don't we? You have admit more to access? being common. Yes. There's nothing common about you from what I've seen so far. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> You've only All seen... right. Let's get anyway, to a real question because you know I'm here to educate for yes, no other reason. Educate. I'm not here to have fun. You Yo. know. Yo, educate us. Yo. Why is it so not accessible for? It seems to me my idea of cabaret 
my my preset notion, because I but I am non-judgmental, is that it's it's an elitist money like wise. Opera? N- worse than opera. I Oh no. Yeah. Nothing's worse than opera. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> <laughs> However, I, it's, it's not accessible. It, it's always done in very high class, high end hotels, and the ticket prices are very. It just seems that it's not okay. so accessible. Not true. Right. Okay. Danny's Skylight Room, which is a perfectly wonderful room mm-hmm. where some of my friends play, mm-hmm. is not a very expensive ticket, and mm-hmm. you can fall in love with cabaret there. Uh-huh. The duplex down in the village is not very expensive right now that um, you can easily fall in love with Cabaret there. Mm -hmm. And then you can save up your pennies and go to the Regency and the Carlisle and the Algonquin to see me. I know it's expensive, but I don't consider it elitist in the, in no offense to opera lovers. It's opera is elitist in a different way. Absolutely. It is exactly. the high ticket price, and right. then it that. is relatively intellectually elite that you have got to do your homework before you go to opera. Mm-hmm. When you go to a cabaret, we do your homework for you. I am there to teach you mm-hmm. on the night you arrive. Right. That's what's so lovely about cabaret. We cabaret artists teach you about the American popular song. You arrive, I give you all the information you need to know when you get there. There is nothing elitist about it. Mm -hmm. It is the friendliest, tenderest, funniest, and sweetest art form there is. How could you get that message out then? Because that's not the message I'm getting out it there. out right I now. Know now. I know you are now. So Unless this is all qu- a trick just to meet me. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> I'm a good is question Is this axer. just some <laughs> fake <laughs> television yeah. show? Find the camera. I should have known. What kind of coffee is it? Is this real coffee? I don't know. Maybe that's why you gave it up. <laughs> no, it is. It You get that message out. This is great, by the way. I'm, I'm kidding with you, but this is great what you're doing. You are showing a lot of different kind of music to a lot of people. This is going to go out there. I do it by, frankly, teaching a lot. I go to colleges. Mm-hmm. I do a show with um, young people for the Cabaret Convention every year, which is the Young People's Concert, and we bring some people from colleges and from high schools in to teach them that the American popular song is their legacy. Mm-hmm. See, my right. belief is this. If you left college and you didn't know who Emily Dickinson was, you'd think of yourself as undereducated. Mm-hmm. Yet we leave college all the time without knowing who Larry Hart is. There are a lot of people leaving college without knowing who Cole Porter is, except exactly. for Kevin Klein made a movie. Okay, big deal. Now we know. But there, it, this is part of our education that I think is lacking. Mm-hmm. And I believe that these are our poets. These are our master poets, and they need to be taught in schools as well. But my way of teaching is always funny. It's really funny. I put these shows together about composers and lyricists, and I tell their life story. Mm-hmm. And I do it with songs and with anecdotes and with all kinds of really darling little stories. And that's the way my shows evolve. And I've done it for almost 20 years. We're celebrating my 20th this coming fall. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing a show about the incomparable Hildegard, who was a rather zany <laughs> uh, cabaret artist artist from the past. She's a cabaret legend, actually. Actually, a true legend mm-hmm. and known as incomparable. She was the one who wore long gloves mm-hmm. up to here and played the piano with her gloves on. Oh. I saw her once when I was little, and I buttoned her gloves once backstage. <laughs> yeah. She was kind of great. Well, your mother was also a singer. Yes, my mother was a singer. Yeah. She sang in the 1940s. She was a real torch singer, oh, wow. and she still sings. She sings every Thursday at the Algonquin. When I'm in residence, she wow, sings. Does she really? That's uh-huh. That's it really is cool. awesome. And you being singers, I mean, you know the power of the voice. Of Can you imagine she's 87 years old and she sings as powerfully as she did, except stronger, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, more, her more, voice is stronger more. now. Resonance yeah. and power. And wow. chutzpah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my gosh, she's, she's brave. She ends every song like this. <laughs> and I think, Mommy, you know, I work all hour and ten minutes and I don't end a song like that. I mean, you end one song and the audience stands up. They wow, just great. do. They're great. Oh, she's fast. Well, your shows, your shows are unique. I think your shows, every show I've ever seen of yours is very unique. You, you do educate, mm-hmm. but you do it entertainingly. 
Mm-hmm. And I think um, if you if you did happen to see Andrea's show at the Argonne, no, I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's a very entertaining educational right. experience, really. Mm-hmm. You know, she walks you through a lot of songs and she tells you all sorts of background about this. Will very you hold fascinating. my hand through the songs too, dear? Yeah, <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> but then I might hold the hand of the girl who's sitting with you too. Actually, see, right I'm, now I have I'm, a girl I'm, sitting with me. Oh, all right. Um, you know, so I, like, I like to bring everybody in when I'm singing. Girls and boys, dogs, ponies, it just doesn't really matter. But I will bring everybody with, with me. And what I like mostly is whether it's a very elderly couple or a very young couple, they feel very united through songs. And the show that I've just been working on touches me the most. It's called Just Love by Request. And they are actually getting to pick their own songs. I have eight songs, eight numbos, what Mm -hmm. I call numbos, Mm -hmm. that I'm doing every single night. But the rest of the songs in the show are being picked out of a hat. Oh, wow. So live by request, literally. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And they write in their favorite songs based on a little booklet that we Mm -hmm. did up. Mm -hmm. And then I pick it out of my father's top hat. And then I ask them what does the song mean to them. Because what I'm trying to get at is that music, (coughs) actually not music, songs have a value in people's lives. A value. And it's a value beyond preventing you from having a conversation with a stranger in an elevator between the first floor and the 18th floor. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's beyond Muzak. It is a value in the history of their lives. So what I want to do when I mention their song is to ask them there among 60 people, what is that song to you? That's very nice. Why do you want to hear that song? Not because, Andrea, you sang it some night and I remember you singing it and it means something that way. What does it mean to you? And while they're telling me that, Shelley then figures out, does he play it (laughs) feverishly hunting through 200 songs? He figures out, well, we can't play it as an up song. We have to play it as maybe a moodier song or we have to play it maybe as a slightly more whimsical song or whatever quality it's going to have. And then I will sing it and it's a communication between audience and person. Mm -hmm. It also brings me into the house, thereby breaking the fourth wall forever. Mm -hmm. And that is also something that I like to do. And yeah, it's a, it's really that dangerous. Really cool. It's really no, well, no in a good way. Yeah, in a, in good, a good way. You have that's, to have fun. With I it. mean, <laughs> I like I like to do that. Yeah. So that's the joy of cabaret, actually. Well, it makes it you interesting know, too. It's yeah. breaking that you fourth guys. wall. That's yeah. why people come right. because yeah. they want it broken. Right. As yeah. opposed to jazz or something where where there is a wall. Right. In cabaret, or there opera. is none. Or opera. Right. right. There is none. Well, there's a false, I think there's a false education about opera. I mean, that was the pop music of that day. Absolutely. And people, I mean, those guys were pop composers back then. Yes. Yeah. But now yeah. it's been created, like the, like you guys say, this fourth wall, and it's like not touchable. It's yeah. become a museum piece. Yeah. Yes. That's it why it's failing. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want that to happen to Cabaret at I don't want all. it to happen to the Great American Songbook at all. That's no. Right. No. And I was just watching, you know, I watch American Idol with my 10-year-old, and we adore it. But I was just saying to Shelley uh, on our way back from a concert that we just did, they had Rod Stewart teaching the uh, American popular song to these kids. Why not Tony Bennett? Right. Why not? If it had been Tony Bennett. How perfect that would have One of been! The great American song singer. I mean, someone who could really. Do I it. like Rod Stewart, and yeah, I like what he's done, and I think it's wonderful that those four albums are hits. Mm-hmm. But it should have been Tony. It should have been a legend of the American popular song. Someone who could have stopped all that riffing. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're about, though. Not sure. <laughs> anyway, sing something else for us now. I would love to. <laughs> I mentioned that Shelley writes beautifully. Mm-hmm. And he and Judith Viorst put together a magnificent show. Shelley, perhaps you could introduce it a little bit more about Alexander and... And the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It, it, was, a very pop- a chil- it was a very popular children's oh, book about okay. 30 years ago. Yeah. All her children are now grown. But uh, we did it for, at the, for the Kennedy Center. Well, you just had something at the Kennedy Center recently, correct? Yes, it, right. was, a, it was a sequel to Alexander called Alexander Who's Not, 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 Not Going to Move. <laughs> 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 Very funny, too. But, yeah. but this was a, this was a, a uh, lullaby 
that the mother sings to a child. And people like Andrea, I'm very lucky because she sees something more in it about you know just just wishing people a wonderful a wonderful thing. It's called the sweetest of nights and the finest of days. A lovely song. I didn't know you wrote that song. Yes. Oh, you know it. <laughs> I do know yes, that song. Karen uh, Mason named a yeah. whole album. Yes, I know she did. On it, yeah. right? And I sing it at any any special occasion. Yes. Make sure that mic stand is not going to fall on her mic, or just it'll it'll. There. Okay. Is it good? Yeah, but sometimes it does that. Not with it her singing. Not with her singing into it. <laughs> <laughs> You know that's completely filthy, and you know, I'm just going to let it slide. <laughs> I've been in the movies too long not to get every mic joke. <laughs> I wish you, I wish you these wishes. Cool drinks in your glasses, warm food in your dishes, people to nourish. And cherish and love you a lamp in the window to light your way home in the haze. I wish you the sweetest of nights and the finest of days. I wish you, I wish you a talent for living delight in the getting delight in the giving a song in your soul and someone to hear it the wisdom to find the right path when you're lost in a maze I wish you the sweetest of nights and the finest of days a snug roof above you, a strong self inside you, the courage to go where you know you must go, and a good heart to guide you, and good friends beside you. I wish you, I wish you a dream worth the doing. And fortune's face smiling on all your pursuing And pleasures that far, far outweigh your small sorrows Arms open wide to embrace your tomorrows A long sunlit sail on the bluest and smoothest of bays I wish you the sweetest of nights and the finest of days I wish you the sweetest of nights and the finest of days. Beautiful, guys. Very nice. Thank Beautiful. Song. Beautiful. Thank you. Isn't that a lovely song? That is. I think that's one of the prettiest times I've ever heard it sung. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And beautiful. isn't it yes. wonderful to know that it's being sung so often? It was I, even I, on a soap opera, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah <coughs> it was just on the mm -hmm. soaps. I had heard that. Yeah. Kevin Spiritas sang it. So, I have in my hand the most recent mm -hmm. addition to your uh, discography. Correct? Discography. Uh, oh my god. S A T word. <laughs> Spell it. <laughs> it's after our tenor. I didn't say I was a speller. Okay. Well, then you could say oeuvre. <laughs> you could spell that. You could spell that word. Um, Andrea sings mm -hmm. a stare. Yes. I'm going to put it here. How can people get um, Andrea sings a stare? www.markovici.com. Com. Okay. I wanted to call it Markovici.nervous, but they wouldn't let me, <laughs> and they didn't think it was the least bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. So now at your website, do you have what all? Do you have what do you have listed there that they can actually buy? Well, the entire 
Uh, Discovery. Uh, <laughs> Discovery. <laughs> that and the Frank Lesser and the Cole Porter and New Words and Here, There and Everywhere that has that song on it. New Words has a lot of contemporary music that I'm proud to have introduced. That uh, New Words is New Words is a CD of modern music. Okay. Because as much as I collect and and preserve and am attached to the past, I am also a great supporter of contemporary music because when people say, oh, they don't write songs like they used to, it isn't so. It isn't true. They do. They just don't play it on the radio. And as we are now branching out into what you guys are doing, which is so important and so needed, it is also in the radio as well, thank goodness for some satellite radio, but the radio stations are so narrow and all of the great writers like John Bucchino and Craig Carnelia mm -hmm. and Tom Tose and, and uh, Ricky yes. Ian Gordon and Maury Yeston, they're writing gorgeous songs. Mm -hmm. But if you are not getting Sally on Martin. the radio, yeah. <laughs> nobody knows about it at all. So True. again, Cabaret comes in. Mm -hmm. This is another reason to go to Cabaret. And if you're going to, let's say, something that's, that's less expensive like the duplex or... Um, don't tell mamas and and such. Mm -hmm. um, you you really are going to hear a lot of new music. Mm -hmm. Francesca Blumenthal. There are there are Marcy Heisler and Zena oh. Goldrich. You know there are some fantastic people who already have. Oh good, <laughs> they already have their whole songbooks out. And yeah. there's a wealth of new material that maybe they haven't had their Broadway show yet, like Craig Carnelia has. Mm -hmm. John Bucchino hasn't had a Broadway show yet, right. but he's being sung by so many people. He's the one who wrote, um, grateful, grateful, right. truly grateful I am, mm -hmm. sung by Art Garfunkel, right. sung by Barbara Cook. And they each one of them have tons of material that's worth listening to. I don't know, Art Garfunkel recorded that song. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm, he did. And so on my website, first of all, of course, there's all that. There's a calendar I did that I'm very proud of. It's now way out of date, but the pictures are cool. <laughs> oh, what gosh. Kind of, what kind of me and my swimming calendar? pool. Yeah, it's really cool. cool. It's a pinup calendar. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. It's a pinup. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, and, guess oh, what? I have gosh, it in my you happen to have oh, it. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> New inspiration for me. Very proud of that. <laughs> and also, there's, of course, the upcoming dates of where I'm going to be because I am always traveling. Mm -hmm. This summer I'm at the Plush Room. I'm in East Hampton. Mm -hmm. I am then just Music. always traveling. I'm doing the San Fran I'm doing the uh, Pasadena Pops. I'm singing with full orchestra. Oh, very nice. Very yes, nice. which I like to do. It's well, you must know, yeah. being big singers, what it's like to sing it's in a front rush. of. Uh, it yeah, it's really. A rush. really <laughs> AI. And you get to put on a big dress. Don't you love it when you get to do that, boys? <laughs> he it's so it. nice. He I'm it. sure you just love I that. I love November, don't you? man. You look hot in November. <laughs> I mean, you look hot all over here. November's. <laughs> That's when I was about 25 years old. Wow. Oh, I see that's Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. is very, very hot. I mean, you're equally those are really, hot. I'm just saying Those are really vintage pictures. They really that's are. Quite Gosh, they're beautiful. We went to the archive for that. Gosh, look at this one. Isn't that fun? October's fun. They're look at fun. August. I'm yeah. looking at all look of them. Look at August. <laughs> I just moved by I was every month. 16. So. <laughs> wow. So they're, they're really, it's it's an historic archival that's cool. choice of something Well, you know, you, 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 you said... Um, you're a collector. How many songs have you actually collected? I haven't a clue. I have <laughs> thousands. Do you? But in the booklet, we have about 200 mm -hmm. in order to to give to the by request Excellent. people. Right. Yeah, wow. About 200. Now, I, I hear um, your mother, and you have a song you're going to sing. Oh, I would for love your to. Daughter. I am a mother, and, and I would love to. And I you have, have a beautiful daughter, in I fact. I have a magnificently beautiful daughter. I brought you a picture that you can focus on. Does she so live here in New York? Or or in she's in Los Angeles, and she's been a very patient child because I am always away on my tours and such. Yeah. Look at that child. Can you get a picture of I mean, this I'll hold girl? It up. Well, she you want to hold it up? Blue eyes there. Yes. Yeah, she now, does. When she was born, Philip Namenworth, a wonderful songwriter, and Robert Waldman wrote this song for her, and they hadn't even seen her. They couldn't possibly have known anything about her, and they wrote this song for her. Oh, what big eyes you have. Oh, what delicious surprise they have. I wonder what they see when they look at 
at me can it be my days do not a fascination ah what red lips you have such cheekbones and cute fingertips they have a hold on me that totally mystifies and oh my stars look at those eyes oh how petite your feet ten little piggies so sweet your feet i wonder when you grow Casual ease you have each hiccup, oy vey, and that sneeze. God bless you have loosed in me feelings I can't disguise. And oh, my stars, look at those eyes. I wear this idiotic grin for my vocabulary reduced to describing each muscle and joint of you from every angle and possible point of view oh what strong gums you have why do i feel i'm all thumbs you have revealed to me the secret of lullabies each magical melody says you'll always be part of me look at those eyes oh my stars look at those eyes Beautiful. That is great. Isn't that lovely? That's really cool. <laughs> and can you imagine receiving that when you never even saw the picture or anything? Saw the girl. The baby. I mean, yeah. the baby. everybody was so happy for me when I had my baby. Yeah. She was so late in life, being the classic feminist, you know, having the baby at the last possible <laughs> second. <laughs> no baby, no baby, no baby. Oops, baby. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, wow. So you just finished a movie. Yes, I just wrapped um, a day or so with Henry Jaglum, my mm. ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You think I'd know better? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw I saw a movie with you back in the eighties with that he. Yes, had done. exactly. I see. I did there. I've been there. I've done yeah. that. I went back for more. <laughs> and you sang um, "Someone to Love." Yes, I did. "Someone to Love." Yeah, that one. Just fell and in love I sang with that in song. this movie too. Did you? Really? So we'll see what happens. I mean, I sang about five songs, and he thinks that he may intersperse these songs throughout the picture. Mm -hmm. It depends when he's done. You know, Henry Jaglum. It'll take two years to edit it. I'll be practically <laughs> hey, sixty that editing, by the time it comes out. That's an issue. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Got to find the right one. But it's very improv. interesting. <laughs> well, he, well, <laughs> Shelley was there, so he saw the whole thing is quite improved. You have sort of a script, and then you have to deliver whatever's in the script, and then you just go from there. After oh, that's that, fine. you improv the rest of it. It's terrifying. That's kind of like Christopher Guest. You know who, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah. It's very I love that. that but we did pretty well. We did, yeah. and I loved being able to, to sing that many songs on camera. It was nice. It was kind of like today. <laughs> <laughs> I like this a lot. <laughs> I'm getting used to this. <laughs> I want cameras at the Algonquin. <laughs> I'm going Ready to for be, my close up. I'm going to be very difficult to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want just a suite. I want reality TV. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to get it out. Isn't That's that one fun? way to get the message out. Reality TV. Well, it almost happened. I almost had a television show about a, a year ago and and we'll see what happens it would be fun well you've had you've had um, numerous um, sold out events even Carnegie Hall yes I did I sold out Carnegie Hall Wow congratulations town hall which is coming up again in 07 mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the World War two show okay. I like to do World War two occasionally in its entirety 
<laughs> just every now and then, I like to just do World War II, including the Battle of the Bulge, <laughs> which I always win. I just starve myself until the battle is over. Exactly. Then it's done. Now, we're going to do it again in 07. Well, um, sing one more song for us. We've, you're just such a beautiful lady. Thank Andrea. you. I would sing my wedding song that was written for my wedding. Would oh, that be the, nice? It was yeah. by Tom Tose and David Israel. That'd be lovely. A very original song again, and it's even signed. This is kind of sweet. I didn't. I, I get to the end each time, and I look down at the sheet music. Sorry, honey, I cut you. <laughs> he doesn't need that face. No, no, I shaved him. His nose is gone. Shave. <laughs> She's the sheet demon music. barber of Seville now. It says, "Dear Andre and Dan, best wishes always. Love, Tom and David Israel." They signed it on the back. They sent it as a wedding present. Isn't that a lovely Very thing nice. to get as a wedding present? I love it. I love it. Mm. And the name of the song is? It's called Brave and Foolish Thing. That sounds like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been there, so. Are you divorced? <laughs> Me too. Are you single? Separated. Separated. We really need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let me see. Yes, inner That's thoughts. sort of really getting it out there now, isn't it? You said, what do you want to get out there? Cabaret? <laughs> or my new single status? So, so, tell us the truth. Okay, okay yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is online dating. Very interesting. This is called satellite dating, yes. right? <laughs> it's a brave and foolish thing we lovers do. We acknowledge the fact that the world isn't packed, full of dreams that do come true. We have seen the movies, loved those movies, even though they tend to warp your outlook, even though they break your heart in two. And it's a brave and foolish thing we lovers do. We are fearless and bold like the jousters of old. We proceed as if we relish the sport. We are all do or die with our confidence high and our memories mercifully short. Remember the last one, the way in the past to one. It's a wild and reckless game we lovers play. We keep ignoring the odds, we keep defying the gods And the cynics who say nay We have heard the cynics Damn the cynics Here's the thing that really throws them When I fell, I fell in love with you A foolish thing to do Or else a very brave And foolish thing To do Well, thank you for being with us. This I has been, have this not had like, such a good fun. afternoon in a long time. Well, thank you. Or is it supposed to be night? <laughs> no. uh, we don't know. You don't know. <laughs> they never know. After all, the only the studio no audience. audience. Satellite is eternal. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It's all ours. <laughs> this is true. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank, thank you, guys. crew. Thank you. <laughs>